Modulation effects can be confusing. There are so many types and so many that sound quite similar that it can be hard to know which one to choose, which one to buy. So in this video, I'm going to demonstrate and explain all the different types of modulation. I am not an expert on the technical side of why they sound like this, but I've been using modulation for over a decade, so I know quite a lot. So in a nutshell, what modulation is, is to take your dry signal signal, add another signal on top and alter the pitch and the amplitude of that pitch to create a variety of modulation effects. The first one and the most popular is the chorus effect that we could hear all over the place in the 80s. So this one is quite uh, easy to understand. So you have your clean signal and we're just going to change the pitch ever so slightly on top, which is going to create the chorus effect. It sounds like this. <laughs> Then we have the phaser effect. This one is kind of a big swooshing sound. So instead of just altering the pitch on top, we're actually going to alter the waveform. So when you play a note or a chord, you get an audio waveform that goes up and down like this, right? So what we do is that we copy it and then we invert it 180 degrees and it's going to move in opposite directions. And when you do that perfectly, it actually cancels the sound. So to do that, there's an oscillator that's going to make the, the second waveform move. So that's why you get that swooshing sound and it makes it such as it never cancels it perfectly. So you get the phaser sound this way. It sounds like this. Then we've got the flanger, which uh, many people con confuse the phaser and the flanger. So this one is different because we're going to copy the waveform, but instead of inverting the second one, we're just going to slightly offset it just by a few milliseconds, a few milliseconds of delay, and then it creates that kind of wavy sound, right, that we could hear a lot in uh, the sound of Andy, Eddie Van Halen, for example, uh, comes to mind, or the beginning of like a Rush, uh, the spirit of radio, or examples like this. So it sounds like this. <laughs> Then you've got the tremolo effect. This one could technically not be considered modulation because you don't alter the pitch at all. You just alter the volume. So the volume goes up and down and it creates what we call the tremolo effect, right? When I was young, we still had an old TV in my basement and sometimes I just played at like going up and down in the volume uh, 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 like this. So basically that's what the tremolo is doing. You can change the amplitude of the volume where it's going to be super choppy or you can just change the volume a little bit and it's going to add a uh, a, a little bit of movement in your sound, right? We have that on a lot of amps also, the tremolo effect, so it sounds like this. <laughs> Thank you. 
Then we have the rotary effect. Uh, some people call it the Leslie effect. It's because it's emulating a Leslie speaker uh, for a Hammond organ, right? So Hammond organs were playing through that big wooden box with speakers uh, that were rotating like physically in the box and that was creating that kind of swirling sound because it was moving physically on it, right? So we can plug through it not only with keyboards but with guitar also. So it, uh, this effect, the rotary, is to emulate the Leslie speakers. It sounds like this. <laughs> Then we have the vibrato effect, right? Much like vibrato on the guitar is when you, you like pitch bend, right? It's like bending the string up and down in a constant motion like this. Uh, you can do it fast or slow, but it's kind of the same principle for the vibrato effect, right? It's gonna give you that steady change of pitch on what you're playing. So it's quite similar to chorus, but the difference is that you remove the dry signal. It's like the whole signal that's pitched like this and not the dry signal and the modulation on top, right? So I'm gonna demonstrate how the vibrato effect sounds, and then I'm gonna put the chorus clip again and the vibrato again so that you can hear the difference between both. <laughs> And then you have the ring modulator. It's just a crazy modulation effect, totally out of pitch, out of tune. Uh, it sounds like a robot almost, right? So it's like su if you want to go super weird and crazy. So you can go, you can keep some of your dry signal and add that robotic out of tune feel on it. It sounds like this. <laughs> But if you go fully wet signal and only play through the ring modulator with like random LFOs, you can get very, very experimental and crazy like this. <laughs> So it's not typically the modulation effect that you would think of when you want to buy a modulation pedal or something, but if you like to go very crazy, that's the way to go, the ring modulator. So I personally play ambient guitar music, so how I use modulation in my music is to create and craft different textures, right? You want to play through layers in your song that don't all sound the same with the same clean and dry signal. You want to craft your textures with reverb and delay and modulation also. So when you have access to many types of modulations, you can really craft the tones that you want to have something that's super interesting in your different layers. So the ones I use the most are the chorus and the vibrato also. And sometimes when you buy a pedal, it can do multiple of that, right? So with the right settings, you can make a chorus sound like a vibrato or a flanger sound like a chorus. So sometimes you have access to many of those in a same pedal. It's just a matter of twisting the knobs and having fun and experimenting and finding what kinds of sounds you can find. So if you want help on how to uh, craft different layers and different sounds to make ambient guitar music, go check out my free mini course, A Beginner's Guide to Ambient Guitar. It's the first link in the description box below. It's a free 45 minutes online course where you get many videos, downloadables, and lessons where I show you how you can craft
craft some of the most popular ambient guitar tones and textures and how to get started layering them to create your own original ambient guitar songs. So it's totally free. Why not? Go check it out. Go sign up for it. First link in the description box. And also you can watch this next video on my channel if you want to learn more about the types of reverbs or the types of delays as well. So see you in those videos and thank you so much for watching. Until next time, au revoir.